sorry, I keep shaking it if you can hear that on camera. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry, mind wanders. Um, what is up everyone? Fish Shop Matt here. Hope you're all well, hope you're enjoying, well, what is our summer, um, but it's been very rainy. Now, I've been away on holiday for a week and a half. I left the tanks to, well, no, I didn't. I didn't leave the tanks to their own devices. I had some auto feeders on some of them. Uh, I had my mother-in-law, Michelle, coming in and uh, sorting out a few. So shout out to her. Thank you very much for looking after the fish. And yeah, they've done really well, to be honest. And I wasn't gonna make a video today. I was gonna have a rest and chill out because I've only just got back. But I thought you would find something interesting. This tank, as I say, has done awesome. A uh, few plants are looking a bit sort of algified. I haven't been putting in the plant food like I normally do. So, you know, it's been doing okay. And a few of the leaves have been eaten, you know, so on, so on. So it'll take a couple of weeks to regain that sort of flourish that it normally has, but that's okay, I can deal with that. The live bearer cube downstairs has done quite badly, to be honest. I think the dog just got up. Um, well, not badly. No, that's not the right word. Um, well, anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. But while I was away, I was looking through the comments and seeing what the sort of the most commented thing was, I suppose you'd say. And a lot of you have been asking about what foods I feed at home. Obviously, I show them feeding, but I don't actually really often talk about what I feed them. Um, so oh, hang on, let me get a chair uh, and let me grab my foods. We'll talk about this tank first and what foods I feed on it. And then we'll go over to the live bearer tank. Um, I may show you the better tank upstairs. I've done that one this morning and the plants have just been cut back. So I might show you that one as well. We'll see how it goes. But this one and the other one, the live bearer cube, are the main two that I'll show you. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that one in a minute. But let me grab my foods. I'll show you what I feed in here. And then we'll go to the live bearer tank because I've got a lot of work to do on that tank. Right. So chair, food. Where's all the other food? Catfish, algae wafer. There we go. Right. Ah. Now, as with everything, and as I always say in most of my videos, variety for fish is perfect. You know, my tetras in here enjoy a good algae wafer as much as my plecos and bristlenose do. Um, yeah, and even the festives will go for it. So it's the more foods you can get, the better. At home, I use NT Labs foods pretty much for all of my tanks. Um, I'll put in a bit of frozen every now and again, but the range that NT Labs do with, um, you know, algae based and, uh, well, all the different things. It just means that I can cover all the bases for my fish from one brand. It's quite easy, quite simple. Now this tank here majorly gets probiotic tropical. If you can see that, there you go. Um, it's a granular food. I find feeding granular foods easier than flake foods because the flake food breaks up in the water and can make a bit of a mess sometimes. It ends up looking like a, I don't know, like a snow globe sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it looks like you've just shaken the aquarium up. Whereas granular food, it gets picked up really, really quickly. So that's my main staple diet in this aquarium. Sorry, I keep shaking it if you can hear that on camera. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry, mind wanders. Um, yeah, sorry, staple, that's my staple. Now, there are obviously other fish in here. So you've got things like the tetras, you've got things like the festive cichlids, we've got um, some bristlenose catfish, we've got some otto sinkless, we've got, what else have we got in here? Oh, there's the cockatoo dwarf cichlids. I haven't seen them today, God knows where they are, um, but they'll be in here somewhere. Um, we've even got some little live bearers. I've actually put the xenotoka do dry do 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 dry o do dry o anyway. It always reminds me of that Pokemon, Do Dodrio, Dodrio, the, the emu looking thing. Um, but anyway, again, see, I've been on holiday and my brain's not in it. Now I do use both of NT Lab cichlid foods in there. So they do cichlid red 44, uh, 48, and they do cichlid green 33. Now, obviously the difference between them, this one's more meaty, this one's more algae, it's fairly simple. Most of the fish in here are opportunistic, so they'll eat just about anything that they can get their mouths around at any time. So again, the more varied a diet you can give them, the better. I would probably say that the Cichlid Red 48 is designed a little bit better for the festives that I've got in here and the Epistos, wherever they are. But mixing in a little bit of algae-based stuff every now and again isn't going to hurt. Now lastly, what goes into this tank dry food-wise is the catfish pellets. So that's gonna be feeding things like your Corydoras. Um, and I have got, 
no, can't see them. I have got some South American bumblebees in here, which my wife chose. Um, they come out when there's food. They don't often come out any other time. They're normally lurking in amongst the crypts. So we'll see if we can get some shots of those in a minute coming out um, and see if we can see them. Yeah, I can't see them at the moment. The other thing that I do is obviously algae wafers. So that is for our bristle noses in here. It's also for our Otto Sinclair, and it's for a couple of the elderly Amano shrimps that call the Bogwood home. Those guys will all eat that. Oh, and I've got the clown plecos in here as well. I forgot about them. So they'll all go for that. So yeah, using all these different varieties of food, as I say in most of my videos, and I've possibly already said it in this video, variety is where it's at. That's what you need to do. Um, everyone would get bored of cottage pie or, um, actually to be fair, there's probably a few of you that don't know what cottage pie is. Look it up, it's horrible. I ate it, it's horrible. Blech. Um, but everyone would get bored of eating lasagna every day or whatever. So the more varieties of food you can put in there, the better. And that's why, in all honesty, they're around here somewhere. I've got the discus granules as well. And every now and again, I'll, you know, once a week or once every couple of weeks, I'll put a few of the discus granules in there. Again, just a different food, slightly different makeup, slightly different protein, slightly different ingredients. Just makes them different, makes it something different for them to feed on. Um, works really, really well. So. That's all the foods I feed in this tank. Um, let's go show you the live bearer tank and uh, what's happened to that one. Right, now let's show you the problem tank. Now at first glance, everything looks okay. The problem comes is when, yeah, okay, the water level's dropped a little bit. The problem comes when you look at how thick this limnophila is at the top. And my nice red Ludwigia, my nice white, Ludwigia that was in there. Let me take you around the other side to show you actually. Yeah, so my nice Ludwigia that was in there and my red one and my red Altenanthera has all been killed by the Trifid, that is this Limnophila at the top. So I've got to cut all of that out. Now the only irritating thing is, well actually this is only a week and a bit growth. So it's obviously settled really well and just gone boom and overtaken. I was cutting it back fairly often um, but yeah, that has absolutely taken over. So we better get in there, chop all of that out, and then I can show you what I feed these little guys in here. Now I know it's really bright, but I just wanted to show you guys the top of this tank. Look at that! So hopefully I can salvage some of this. Um, so that's the Ludwigia like orangey red one, I think. And then I can see, I was worried I'd lost all this Ceratopteris. But that's back there. Obviously loads of limnophila and this stupid water lettuce has gone nuts as well. But yeah, I'm just gonna have to be careful because there's a lot of babies hiding up in here. Tons and tons of babies. So yeah, I'm gonna have to be really, really careful. But let's just get it stripped out. And then uh, I've actually bought some more plants and I've got some cuttings from other tanks and um, got some cuttings from Danny's tank as well in the shop. So hopefully we can make good of an overgrown bad situation. I don't know where to start. I suppose it's get the water lettuce out. That is the majority of the floating water lettuce out. Like seriously, that is so much. Just to give you an idea, this tray is like over two foot long. So that is a lot of water lettuce. I think I'm gonna keep minimal amount back in um, and just put the red rooty floater back in. That's very bright up there, isn't it? That light is insane. That's that ONF light. They are such good lights, but they are so, so bright to record with. Sorry for that. Yeah, so uh, right now onto the stem plants. Let's get cutting on them. That's made a bit of a mess. So all these bits that you can see floating around are bits of limnophila. So what I've got to do now is pull out this uh, Ludwigia palastrus red and replant that some of the bottom. I have lost that Ludwigia white completely. So I'm gonna have to get Danny to order me some more of that, I reckon, to get in there. But that has let some light in now. It does look a bit of a mess, but once I chop all that back, replant that, replant some of the limnophila, put some of the plants in that Danny let me have, we should be good and we should be back to normal, hopefully. Let's, uh, let's get that Ludwigia pl uh, plastrous red cut out. Right, so that's made a bit of a mess, but I'm fine with that, I'm okay with that. You've got to make a mess to create something better <laughs> or something like that. 
break eggs to make an omelet. I don't know, there's a saying, isn't there? Um, yeah, that's a bit of a mess. But what I'm gonna do is I've managed to salvage a load of the orangey sort of Ledwidgia. So that's good. And I've managed to salvage a load of the red Ledwidgia. And like I said, I've got some uh, Myriophyllum brasiliense, which is a nice feathery plant with a sort of silvery texture to it. I've got some Rotala hetera. I've uh, got some of the reds, got some of that. So yeah, I've got a few bits to go in here. So um, I think I'm gonna plant it up in the murkiness. And then what we can do is we can leave this tank to settle. I'll go show you the uh, better tank upstairs, get him fed. He's had a massive cutback already. So that just looks like a mess anyway. But let's go get him fed and then we'll come back to this one once it's cleared a little bit later. But let's get the planting done now and then we can let it settle. Also thought I would just show you. Now I can't show you the weight of it but that is how much limnophila I just took out of that tank. It weighs a good kilo or so, I reckon. Obviously, it's got a lot of water in it, but that is a lot of plant. So uh, anyway, let's get planting. We've removed the 10 ton of limnophila from the back. We've just left a wall of it. The ceratopteris that I was worried was gone is still there hanging on. So I think it'll be okay. And then we've replanted the Ludwigias, orange and red. Danny's Retala Hatra is around that corner. And we've put the Myriophyllum brasiliensis there. Um, we're gonna let this clear for half an hour or so. Uh, let's go and have a look at the better tank upstairs. It's uh, Again, not in the best of states because I've been away for a while and uh, yeah, it's uh, not looking as clean. But let's go show you what I feed the better and then hopefully when I come back down to this tank, it'll have cleared, I can scoop off all these bits of plant and I can show you what I feed these guys as well. So now we're up with the better tank upstairs. Now this one was as overgrown as the tank downstairs. Actually, let me just take you off the tripod and I can show you what I'm talking about. So, all this hygrophilia polysperma in the back here was literally at the front of the wall where it had grown up over the course of the week. And it's a mixture of hygrophilia polysperma, limnophila sessiflora, and some elodia that you can see I've not planted that stem back in. So yeah, that's done really well. Obviously the Anubiuses are doing really well in this little tank and all the crypts, they're really, really nice. I might have knocked that bogwood over, look. Oh well, I quite like it, looks a little bit more jagged. But yeah, doing really, really well. And there's our little better. Now the keen-eyed amongst you may notice that this guy is a little bit of a different better to what we actually put in there. Now, story time with that. Hang on, let me get in front of the camera. So as I said, a little bit of a story time about this slightly different better than you would have seen previously in this tank. Unfortunately, the original one we had developed a, essentially what looked to be a sort of a growth or a tumour and then it started to bend his spine, as horrible as that sounds. Don't want to go into gory details, but his head started to sort of bend upwards and you could see he was struggling to swim. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, that's not an illness that we're going to be able to catch and not going to be able to see because tumours are something that just happens. Um, so, yeah, you just got to live with it. He was still feeding up until the last day and then one day I came in and he had gone, unfortunately. So this is what brings us to this new better, which is a little red, orange and blue better. Um, so he's quite cool. As sad as it is, it happens with these fish being so small. You know, these illnesses can affect them quite badly. But let's show you what we feed this guy and also see if we can get the Amano shrimps out with some shrimp food. So with this little guy, I actually used the nano tropical food, which is again, a little granular food, even got a better on the front of it, look. Um, but it's just a slightly smaller granule um, and the betters seem to do really, really well on it. Let's see if we can get them up to feed now. Um, we'll just pop a little bit in. Obviously with a better and having a single better in a tank, you literally need one or two of these pellets, nothing major. Where's he gone? He's trying to fight the glass over at the back. If I dip my finger in, he normally comes to the front. Here he comes. There we go. Yeah, and he absolutely smashes that food. He loves it. Now I've taken the camera off the tripod for this because the other food that I put in here is this shrimp enhancer. Now all that is, is it's a sinking food specifically designed for shrimps, obviously, as the, uh, as the name suggests. Now the shrimps generally go absolutely mad for this. Um, so does the better normally, unfortunately. So yeah, as I was saying, you can see he's chomping away on that shrimp food and we've got another one that's picked up a couple of pellets back there and he's chomping away on that as well. So 
You don't need to feed it to them often. I just like feeding the shrimp a little bit of shrimp food every now and again, because it gives them the calcium that they need to sort of shed their shells and shells, shed their skin um, and grow healthily. Otherwise, you know, they're just picking up scraps in the aquarium and they don't always do so well. But yeah, that's the two foods I put into this aquarium. They sort of stay beside this aquarium. So I've got them up here. Obviously I use the plant foods in here as well, but um, they are somewhere else. I don't know where they've gone at the moment. But yeah, let's go and see if the tank downstairs is cleared up now and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get some shots of all those live bearers. So it hasn't done too badly. It's cleared up quite nicely. Um, I found my plant foods. They were with this tank, they were in the cupboard. So on this tank, all I do, uh, 25, so it's 11 squirts. Oh my word, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And the same as this one, but this one's daily. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Perfect. So that's the plant food done now on that tank. But what I feed in this tank is a slightly different food. Um, now, it's quite cool. So whereas all of the other stuff for the tetras and the better that I showed you upstairs is about 0.8 mil, I think. Is it 0.8 mil? 0.8 mil, yeah. Um, this is 0.2 mil. Now this is micro crumb. Now obviously it's got a guppy on the front of it and it is like dust. But the great thing is, is the small babies like it, the bigger fish like it, um, and yeah, everyone goes nuts for it. Now there are a few new fish in here that I'm hoping to be able to spot and show you. I can't remember if I showed you the bristle noses that are in here. Um, I might have just posted them to my Instagram, but there is also some catfish that I've put in here and some loaches. So um, yeah, let's get this food in and then we'll have a look and see if we can find the loaches. Right, so as I was saying, this is literally a dust. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. So you do not want much of this. Now I, hopefully, it's very bright. Uh, can I, there we go. Look at that on the surface, you can see it. So it's microscopic, but the fish absolutely go nuts for it. Once it starts floating through the water, there you go, now that it's floating through the water, check that out. They go mad for it, they absolutely love it. Yeah, so this microscopic food, obviously, like I say, you can still see it on the surface there. Once it starts going through the water, you can see how nuts the fish go for it, all chasing it around. And because it's so small, obviously, I think we look at things and go, oh, that's tiny, they're not gonna eat that. But you've got to remember the size of their eye compared to ours, they're gonna pick up on that morsel, on that tiny bit of food so much better than we can. There's one of my little limias, look, they don't stay still, those things. I can never catch them on camera properly. So yeah, they're doing really well. Now that I've fed that food, some of the boys have come out. I say boys, probably boys and girls. But these, oh, I can go around the other side, can't I? Keep forgetting this tank is uh, two-sided. So these oh, are dwarf chain loach. Now, uh, yeah, I've got a little group of four at the moment. I'm hopefully gonna pick up some more. There's one down there. Oh, bye. Um, they're just a really cool, tiny little snail-eating loach. Now, they are not obviously gonna eat big snails because they're dinky. That's, you know, a little bit bigger, but not greatly greatly, not much more. Um, so they're not too big, but yeah, cool little species. The other species I put in here, which is down with them here, which I do put algae wafers in here every now and again for, are the long finned bristle noses. So you can see, oh, there's another one just there. You can see how long their tails are and how flowing their tails are. Here you go. Now I've got a group of six of these in here, just growing up, maybe for a breeding project, but really I just want to see them grow up to be honest. Um, but yeah, they're doing really, really well. I'll tell you what, let's go get some algae wafers for them. Why not? Let's put some in there while we're here. There we go. So I've dropped some algae wafers into here. Now they've already come down and already started sniffing around on the ground trying to find them. We've got four. Oh no, the other one's gone the other way now. We've got three trying to find them. You can tell because they all hit the deck and they're like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here they come. Yeah, they're so cool. Look at those fins. Go on. Who's going to get it first? They're stuck in the grass. Oh, bless him, he's got his long fin stuck. There we go. Yeah, absolutely smash those algae wafers. They're really good. Like, I find a lot of the fish sort of come out for these really quickly, which is really cool. Like, some algae wafers can take like a little bit of time before fish come out for them. But these, like, well, you saw then, I only just put them in and the smell of them obviously brought these fish out really, really quickly and they're already chomping down on them really well so yeah really cool and there's those little group of loaches look so yeah doing really well i think you know i'll give you an update on a couple of weeks on a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks of how this tank does but yeah hopefully 
I salvaged a lot of that plant. I didn't think there was much left. There's that myriad film that I was talking about. Uh, so I see it's a bit sort of feathery and they've got a red stem, it's quite nice. Um, and then, oh, Danny's Hatra. Yeah, it's just over there, look. So hopefully once all that grows up, this tank will be back to its uh, glory days. Obviously the grass is growing in well, the crypts are doing so, so well. So everything else is fine. It was just that stupid limnophila that was uh, taking a bit of a hammering. Well, no, well, gave a bit of a hammering, didn't it? But yeah, I'll catch all these little bits out later. I've got loads of bits of plants still. I hate doing that, especially with baby fish in there because it just becomes a nightmare to catch them out. <laughs> just wanted to show you this, look. There's a little group of limia and a baby limia as well, actually, look. All trying to take on the bristle doses for uh, ownership of the uh, algae wafers, which is quite cool. That's probably the stillest these uh, little uh, limia have been ever. And I've been able to capture them. Oh, they've all gone now. But yeah, that's quite cool, isn't it? I like that. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into uh, what went wrong during my holiday. Uh, I've got to put the lid back on and top this tank up in a minute. So I might do a little water change on it. Yeah, probably be worthwhile, wouldn't it? I'll do a little water change on it. But I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into what foods I feed and uh, the problems that having a holiday causes a fish keeper when your plants overgrow. It's a good problem to have, I suppose, isn't it? Plants overgrowing rather than everything dying. But uh, yeah, I'm going away again in like two, three weeks time for another week. So um, yeah, I might need to cut that down to like this tall before I go. And then hopefully it won't be too big by the time I get back. Um, but yeah, I'll leave some links down in the bottom of the uh, description so you can see the NT Labs range of food and liquids and things like that. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. I'll um, see you in the next one. I'm gonna do an update on the experiment tanks actually, cause I got some really cool little fish that went in there. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna like them. Watch out for that video cause they are, the, yeah, cool fish. Anyway, see you in the next one. Bye.